John Hayes, Speaker. Uh, above all, uh, above all else, uh, Brexit is about reclaiming power from the globalist elite. We owe we owe a great debt to the 17.4 million people who voted for Brexit. Not only did they bravely risk taking back control of our sovereign governance, our laws, our borders and our economy, they exposed the arrogant, self-serving elite in this nation, some of whom sit in this chamber, some of whom sit in this chamber. And, and, I, and, I, and as the, as the Honourable Lady from, from Totnes spoke about her, her day out on the people's vote, I thought, I thought to myself, I could just imagine it's kind of Glyndebourne, the Henry Gatter, and it's the People's Vote March. It's all part of the season for a certain kind of people. Now, following their democratic defeat in the British vote for anything, uh, well, I, 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 I'll just make a little progress. I want, to, I want to flesh out my case against the elite for the lady, honourable lady. I'm going to, not, not quite yet. Not quite yet. Not quite yet. Not quite yet. I, I, I may give way later when I've finished fleshing out my case against the elite which she's decided to join. Um, now, they, 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 uh, and I do say join, I do say join, because she wasn't born to it. Uh, following their democratic defeat in the biggest vote for anything in British history, much of that Liberal establishment has responded with stunned entitlement and deafening hysteria. They, and and the, the essence of the reason for that hysterical reaction is these people are not used to being told that they're not right. They're not used to having their sense of entitlement challenged. Because that sense of entitlement is not just about a material thing, an advantage in terms of place and progress. It's also the self-serving entitlement that prohibits views other than their own and wants to delegitimise the opinion of the vast majority of law-abiding, patriotic, decent British people who voted for Brexit. That's the truth of it, and it needs to be said in this chamber. I, well, I will happily give way to the Honourable Lady. She was first, and as a matter of chivalry. Fascinating. Can I say to the Honourable Gentleman, uh, a knight of the realm, of course. Yeah. <laughs> a member of a new elite, perhaps. Not a worker. Not a worker. Does he not understand that it's across the length and breadth of this country, in places like Redcar, where the Honourable Lady is more than able to make the case, as I know she does, that people are supporting a people's vote? Is he saying that the people of Nottingham, a city with which he's well familiar, are an elite in Nottingham, in Redcar, in Sunderland, among South Yorkshire, and indeed in Streatham, are they our elites? Not to consider what happened in Redcar the last time we had a people's vote, because we've had a people's vote in this country, it was called the referendum. And what happened in Redcar, since, she, since she's drawn attention to Redcar, Mr. Speaker, is that 66.2% of the people who voted in red car voted to oh, leave the European oh, Union. Oh, and, and, and indeed, in Middlesbrough, in red car, as I've said, uh, in Bassett Law, in Ashfield, in Mansfield, uh, in Hartlepool, in Stoke-on-Trent, on Barnsley, Kingston-on-Hull, Blackpool, and I could go on, more than 65% of the population who voted in that biggest ever reference to the people, voted to leave the European Union, and they expect this House to deliver on that deal. Because when this House chose to delegate its authority to the people, and I don't say that's something that should be done lightly, I'm not a great fan of referenda, frankly, because they create binary choices and would have very complicated arguments. But when we chose to do that, we by nature invested our faith in what the people decided. And to breach that faith now, to break that promise, would undermine confidence in the democratic process in a way that scarcely anything has done before. Now, I happily give way. Speaking of the democratic process, I give way to Honourable Lady, who was elected as a Conservative and now has chosen not to be one. I give way to her.
You're a disgrace. You're an absolute um, I feel for I, Thank you very much for giving away. I feel, I feel fortunate that I didn't actually hear what he called me, regardless. I just wanted to check if it was, in fact, an act of chivalry not to allow the good people of Redcar and Barnsley and Nottingham to have their voice again. Is it an act of chivalry not to allow them to say how they feel today? The Honourable Lady must, must understand that once you've agreed to have a referendum, which is what this House did by an overwhelming majority, once you've done in the manifesto which is pledged, as both Labour members of Parliament and she, by the way, did, to honour the result yeah. of that referendum, yeah. if you then choose to delay, defer, obfuscate or dilute that commitment, you will be seen to have breached the trust in which people, in which, in which, in which people deserve to hold those they choose to speak for them in this mother of parliaments. And it is, uh, I'm not going to give away a game because, Mr Speaker, I'm conscious that others want to speak. I have a short time limit and uh, it's interrupting my lovely flow. And so I don't, I don't, want, to, I don't, want, to, don't want to do that. Um, the, 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 truth is, the truth is that there are people here who campaign for Remain, many on the other side of the House, many on this, who respect the result of the referendum, who want to honour the pledge that we made, who want to do the right thing by the people, and who want to leave the European Union. But there are a minority that are unreconciled with the result of the referendum, that are using every means at their disposal, fair and foul, to frustrate its result. And they are hiding behind all kinds of, uh, all kinds of uh, improbable and incredible excuses for so doing, and this People's Vote campaign is frankly one of them. And, uh, Mr Speaker, you need to know, and I am sure uh, the House needs to know, that there are some of us who stand resolute uh, in opposition to this uh, further reference to the people, as though we haven't had a People's Vote. Because if we were to agree to it, what about if on a lower turnout people voted to remain? What about if... Uh, if it was a marginal decision, uh, once again, by a smaller margin than the last time, will we have a third referendum in order to settle the matter? Is it going to be the best of three or the best of five or perhaps the best of seven? How many referenda must we have before the settled will of the people is established? Mr Speaker, uh, I stand for the people, of the people and by the people. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm proud to have got to this place from where I began, but I, unlike some honourable members, have not forgotten my origins, and I will stick by the people, and the people wanted to leave the European Union on time, lock, stock and barrel.